Good afternoon. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. And in the event a fire alarm sounds, please remain in the auditorium. Should there be a need to evacuate, a Springmore staff member will direct you. Please do not use the elevators. And where do we go? Red Pole. Red Pole. All right. Thank you so much for coming today. We are here for Wellness Wednesday. You're all curious about the merger and the changes and what does that mean for you here at Springmore. So, my name is Carrie. I am your Pathways Wellness Director and shortly you'll get to meet our amazing team. But first I wanted to remind you that the word wellness does not equal fitness. Someone just asked me, well, why do you have wellness still in your title if you're not just doing exercise anymore? And I said, well, because wellness is not just fitness. So a few years ago, we got together and made a mission statement. So on the screen for you is the statement that we put together. Because wellness is not just fitness, we wanted everybody to remember that it's multidimensional, state of being, encompassing those activities and pursuits which bring optimal life satisfaction to the individual, but also enrichment to the community. Because if everyone's pursuing things to make their life better and we're working together, then it makes our community even better as well. Time for a quiz. Don't be scared. True or false, Pathways was created and developed by Springmore employees. Raise your hand if you think it's false. Don't be embarrassed if you're wrong. Raise your hand if you think it's true. Ding, 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 it's true. Obviously, we did not create the concept of wellness, but we did have a committee that came up with different names and worked together and we came up with pathways and made that mission statement together. All right, next question. What year did Pathways Wellness originally launch? It's not when Springmore started wellness, but when did we start Pathways? Any guesses? It's not just now, this is kind of a relaunch. See, that's the fun part. Yeah. 2000, not quite. 2013 is close. Almost. 2012, yes. 20, 2012. And then the Wellness Center opened 2013. No, that's a lie. My son was born in 2013, so the Wellness Center opened in 2014. That's how I remember. <laughs> All right, how many dimension? If it's multidimensional, how many do we recognize at Springmore? There was a cheat sheet out there. Six, I hear. Ten, seven, haven't heard the number yet. Eight, yes. Yeah, the sticky notes kind of correlate to them, but um, if you Google wellness, sometimes you'll see six dimensions, seven dimensions. So we decided on eight. Who can guess what they are? Well, no, that's, that's a good guess, but no, the general dimension or broad word that we use. I'll give you a hint, one of them is physical. <laughs> Spiritual, social, emotional. You want me to give you a hint? Here they are. <laughs> so we like to recognize physical, emotional, Sometimes you'll see occupational, but we chose vocational because some people say, well, I'm retired. I don't have an occupation. But vocational, thinking hobby, hobbies, getting involved, learning new things, giving back. 
Nutritional, we try to separate the physical and nutritional. Social, environmental, which could mean not only the broad environment, but also your home environment here at Springmore. Spiritual and intellectual. So we've recognized these for a while. Springmore has always done a great job of providing activities and programs and plenty of opportunities. But with this new merger and this new department, because so many of these things overlap, we get to work together and really make sure that we're providing everything you all want and need. And we can expand and grow and continue the things that are working well. All right. Your team. Can you all come on up now, please? Come line the front of the tables. Any order is fine. Yay, give them a round of applause. So I'm very excited for all of these people. I'm going to say your name, and when I say your name, you can raise your hand. We've got Anna Hogan. Woohoo! She is your new resident life coordinator. <laughs> Ruth McCullers Lee, your pathways coordinator. Chris Lawyer, your fitness coordinator. Julie McManus, Pathways Assistant. Megan Sheeran, Pathways Assistant. Lori Higgins, One Chaplain. And Justin Williamson, the other chaplain. And I also put Jessica Rivera's name up there. She is your catering contact for Sodexo but she works a lot with Resident Life and all the wonderful events. So she's part of our planning meetings so that we can really work together and coordinate things. And then also a special thank you to... Wave. To Brenda Baker. So we're very thankful. Brenda and I have had lots of fun conversations and brainstorming so she can help us with our wonderful transition. All right, now, time to get to know us and play a little game. I need a brave resident to try to put us in order of these birth cities. So we have Quakertown, Pennsylvania, Lake Placid, New York, Raleigh, North Carolina, Trenton, New Jersey, Detroit, Michigan, Kinston, North Carolina. Huntsville, Texas, Kenmore, New York, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and Washington, D.C. Pretty diverse, huh? And yes, Becky's, Becky Bulo is our uh, third Pathways assistant. She cannot be here today. So her name was on the previous slide, but she, her place is up here, but she's obviously physically not here today. All right, who's going to be the brave resident? I'm going to have two. Ooh, Karen. So you try to put these first five in order. Who do you think is from Quakertown? Can I go to Guantanamo Bay? Sure. You want, you want to do the second row? All right. We'll give you, I think that's an easy one for some people. So Ruth is Guantanamo Bay. Come on down. So we'll do the second row. Who do you think is Washington, D.C.? Justin? Her first and last name start with the same letter. Brenda. Brenda. <laughs> All right, we've got we've got two New Yorks. I found that interesting. Kenmore, New York. Julie, is it you? No. Who else looks like a New Yorker? Chris, are you from Kenmore? I am not. No. Are you from New York? Oh, that's a good question. Are you from New York? Because there's two. She's not. 
I heard Anna. Anna? Kenmore, New York? No. Justin? Justin. Not from New York either. No. Who's left? Lori. Lori. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, Huntsville, Texas. Justin, they got it. <laughs> All right, we've got Kinston, North Carolina. You only got five left, plus Becky. It's not Megan. Anna? No. Julie. Julie is Kinston, North Carolina. All right, so you're down to us four and Becky. Detroit, Michigan. Yes, I know. I've been wearing my Michigan gear this week. Go blue. Trenton, New Jersey. Oh, good job, Chris. We say Joyzy. Joyzy, sorry. Joyzy. And Raleigh, North Carolina. A local. Megan. Yes. All right, so we got Pennsylvania and New York. We've got Anna and Becky. So which one is Anna from? What do you think? New York? New York? Yes. She is from Lake Placid, so that means Becky is from Quakertown. All right, stay up there. Fun facts. I had so much fun learning these things. Did anybody fill it out? All right, well, now you got to guess. Who caught a smallmouth bass with a string and a safety pin? Thank you so much for thinking that. I have fished growing up by the lakes, but no, I did not do that. Ruth. Nope. Brenda. It was Brenda. Very good. All right. I've been a vegetarian since I was 28. I researched and wrote a paper in college on a meat diet and decided I no longer wanted to eat animals. Good guess, but no. We tricked you. She is vegetarian. <laughs> not Becky. Someone said Anna. Is it you? Yes. It's Anna. I did not know that about Anna. All right. My husband and I were in the same fifth grade class, but didn't realize it until after we were married. <laughs> Someone said Justin. No. Me? No, he was in Tennessee. I was in Michigan. Chris? Well, no. Oh, yeah. No. Ruth? No. Lori? No. Megan? She's not married yet, but show off. She is getting married. <laughs> All right. But not Becky. So who's left? Julie! <laughs> All right, almost there. I played on the University of Alaska Fairbanks women's ice hockey team. So it's not Justin. Oh, you guys know her well, Becky. All right, I once received an autographed football as a grade for a graduate level assignment. It's the only grade I still prize. Oh, you must have shared that. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> All right, five down, five to go. You're doing pretty good. That was Justin for the last one. It was from where? It was a Texas. I lived oceanfront of Wrightsville Beach for my senior year of college. Ruth. No? Megan. Yes, it was Megan. I got engaged in Normandy, France on a cliff in Long Sumer near a German gun emplacement from World War II. <laughs> Chris? Not Chris? Lori? I heard someone say it. Carrie? Carrie, it was me. 
we did a D-Day tour and there was the gun right there and we were on a cliff. All right, I tried to get out of gym class every day. Ruth, <laughs> Ruth for everything. <laughs> it's not Ruth. I heard Lori. It's Chris, our fitness coordinator, tried to get out of gym. <laughs> All right, you only have two left. When I was 10, I ran onto the tennis court while Billie Jean King was warming up for a match to get her autograph. It was finally Ruth, yes. All right, do you remember who's left? I have received a trophy for most congenial bowler. Lori. So she's going to be our bowling captain when we go bowling this year. So now you know a little fun stuff about us. Thank you. All right, you can come back. Except for Anna. All right, so now what you really want to know is what is everybody going to be doing? How is the department going to work? So we're going to go through everybody, kind of go through some bullet points, and we'll have some time for questions at the end if we don't answer all your questions. As your resident life coordinator, these are some of the things I'll be doing for all of you. I'll be planning trips and excursions. So please tell me where you want to go. Uh, I will schedule entertainment and lectures. We'd like to get um, some new speakers in here, some more educational opportunities for all of you. Coordinate special events such as birthday parties and luncheons. Um, I'm going to be doing the movie schedules. I'm going to be attending trips and hosting events. And I'm also going to still be overseeing supportive living calendar and events. I've been working here at Springmore for six and a half years in supportive living. And I'm looking forward to learning more about the independent living side and working with all of you and getting to know all of you. Hey, I'm Ruth McCullers Lee. I will be Pathways Coordinator, and uh, that means that uh, a lot of things will fall from um, many sides for me. Um, and as many of you know, I have deep roots here at Springmore. I have a mom, a dad, and an aunt who have all lived here or are living here. So uh, this is like family to me, so it means a lot. Um, I will be continuing to instruct fitness classes, working really closely with Chris on the fitness programs, and I'm also going to add some of the special events, uh, the theater out outings, special events like that. Uh, so that's where we'll be looking for you to give us some suggestions on things that you want us to keep doing, things you'd like for us to quit doing, things that uh, you have ideas for. Um, coordinating the reservation book, please, please exercise your utmost uh, New Year's patience with me as I learn this uh, from Brenda, uh, but I will be helping to make sure that you have the rooms that you need for events uh, and coordinating that effort, um, trips, hosting events, um, and then finally uh, the games, um, any kind of sports, yes, any kind of like um, uh, bridge, uh, putting, all of those good fun things, that kind of is going to come under our umbrella uh, as, a, as an, a side part to um, fitness as well. So those are the things that I'll be doing. Um, I've got a new phone number. I don't even know it yet. So it's right here. That's it. <laughs> so uh, call me, email me, text me, uh, catch me in the hallway, whatever you need. And uh, I'm really looking forward to being an, an even more integral part of the program here. Thank you. I know that Carrie started off by saying that wellness is not fitness, but come on, we all know that fitness is the most important part of wellness. <laughs> so I will be the fitness coordinator. Um, I have been a fitness coordinator at Health Tracks before I came here to Springmore. I know a lot of you have one time or another been a member of Health Tracks, so it's not exactly new to me. I'll still be doing classes, overseeing personal training, coordinating fitness things and um, also helping out with trips and events because now we're all one department and that's something I never got to do before and I too have a new phone number that I don't know um, so yeah there you go
This is Chris. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie McManus. I've been here, I think we've set up a couple years now. So as Pathways Assistants, Megan, Becky, and myself will be instructing fitness classes and programs, leading activities in supportive living, as well as the Stewart Health Center, various administrative tasks. Um, we will also be attending trips and hosting events. I've already made a long list of new restaurants you guys haven't been to in Raleigh, which I'm really excited about. Um, new events and sites to see. And then I'm going to work on organizing the monthly birthday parties and invitations. The programming aspect of spiritual health, spiritual wellness, Justin and I will continue to be a part of. Um, we continue, we'll continue with our programming in terms of our discussion, our connections group, our support group, our dementia caregiver group. We have reinstituted the changes group. We all go through changes, and even though we may not like change, um, we have changes such as loss and grief that will be ongoing monthly, as well as book studies about aging and just our stage in life or any other topics that you suggest. We are open to book studies that include um, Lent and Advent. And I'll let Justin talk about worship. Well, um, I've been here coming up on about a year now, so I've gotten to see almost a, an entire um, cycle of worship services, and, and um, the Sunday evening Vesper service is one of our main offerings that you, you know about and know to look for. Um, we also do a, a Tuesday morning um, Vesper services in the health center and in supportive living as well. And we also, um, like we bring clergy in from local churches to help y'all stay connected with your church or your faith tradition um, and get a little diversity of experience. Um, we have um, local pat clergy come and help with the, the health center, Vespers, um, and we do, um, like I said, the, the supportive living, and then we'll do memorial services for, for residents. Um, every now and then we'll have a, a staff member or staff member's family um, who, who we'll have a service for here as well. They're part of the community and um, and that's part of our, our ministry here. Um, we do periodic um, special Holy Day services like Ash Wednesday, uh, Maundy Thursday, um, and then some, some more seasonal things like the, the Blue Longest Night, the Blue Holiday service. Um, we'll do um, annual memorial services like the one we had around All Saints Day, and we'll have um, services in the health center for the staff as well, memorial services to help them and a process and, and honor the grief and the, the lives that they've touched and have been touched by. Um, one of the, the things for, for you all for the worship services, in addition to just coming and participating or, or knowing to recommend to your friends, um, we have opportunities that you can get involved. Um, we, we have music in most of our services, so if you are vocal or like have an instrument you play, um, Pianists are always welcome, as well as strings or um, guitars. Um, so if you want to help lead worship, we are always more than happy to, to work with you, um, as well as the um, ushering services. Um, that or We have ushers that help out, especially for funerals, and, and just help host um, families and guests that aren't as familiar with the space here. Um, anything else? Or that? Okay. Yeah, and... In addition to, to those, we, um, in the, we have a, a new, um, or relatively new, um, a little bit newer than me, um, a men's um, coffee group that um, I've started um, hosting monthly. Um, so look out for that in Pathways. It's, a, it's a, been a wonderful time to get together and fellowship and um, build some relationships. And um, pastoral care is, is another part of our responsibilities. Um, we do a lot of pastoral care in the health center, as you would imagine. Um, but we're also here for pastoral care um, for, for any and all of you, any time. Um, something's going on in, in, in your life or in your family. Um, we're, we're here to, to be support for you. So reach out to us. Yeah. 
oftentimes people will stick their heads in their office and say, oh, I don't want to bother you. Please. Please, please come in. We love to see you. We love to hear you say, good morning. My day isn't complete unless I see Mr. Bundy coming to or from swimming every morning. Um, or if I am there later, I see the waters as I am leaving. So please, please stick your head in our office and share your joys and your concerns. Um, we, we treasure and consider it a great privilege um, to share those with you. So thank you. All right. And then my kind of new role, the fun thing about all of this is it's not, well, who's doing Brenda's job? Who's doing Leah's job? Who's doing Carrie's job? We've kind of restructured, kind of dreamed what, how we want this to go because we want it to be effective and efficient and, and fun. So I will get to oversee the department and all this wonderful team coordinating with them. Um, I'll continue publishing the monthly Pathways calendar. Hopefully you liked some of the changes that you saw in January. We'll keep tweaking things as needed to make sure it's effective for you. Um, I will also coordinate, I did this a little before, but we'll try to do even more with Sue, the resident outreach coordinator. We had a great discussion group last week. We have another one at the end of this month and working with Charlotte in the clinic and also with Legacy, um, with Brooke and doing different seminars and events with them. I'll still teach a little bit because I love teaching. You can't take me away from that forever. And then I'm also gonna kind of step in and start overseeing some of the art programs and try to expand that. All right, a few changes, updates, reminders. So I know you're all familiar with the hotline and or the portal to make reservations. What we'd like to also ask of you, in the front of your pathways, we always have that reservation page. That will continue. We may even expand that a little bit. But for things like this, like seminars and things on campus that you don't necessarily have to pay for or get on a bus for, but we are asking that you try to start reserving or signing up for those. Because a lot of times I have speakers say, well, how many should I plan for? How many are going to be there if we're doing handouts or food? So if you think of it over these next few months, if you're on the portal, just click on there and sign up. All right, the other big thing, people were often confused about the 15-minute rule and the bus and loading time, departure time. Well, it says this, but I need to be here at this time. So I'm hoping to alleviate some of that confusion. When we list a time in your pathways, that is our loading time. So if we know that we need to depart here by 10.15, we're not gonna put 10.15 on the calendar. So if we say 10 o'clock in your pathways booklet, then they're gonna start loading that bus at 10. So yes, you should be there before 10. I'm not gonna say it has to be 15 minutes, but just understand that we're loading at 10, so you could be there five minutes early, you could be there 20 minutes early. We will load at north, south, north first and then go to south, but I'm not gonna list a separate time for that. Just know we're gonna load as fast as we can and then get over to south and get on our way. Does that make sense? So 10 o'clock is the north village. 10 o'clock is north village loading time. So everybody that's in the lobby, we'll get you on the bus at 10 and we're going right to south. Because there was confusion before, well, if I get there 15 minutes early, but we're missing one, now we have to wait 15 minutes. So you can be 15 minutes early if you want, but we're loading at 10 to go across to south. So I hope that helps. Reservation reminder calls. So we're going to continue what's been happening with the Sarah system. And when you make a reservation, assume no news is good news. And this month will be much better with reservations, I promise. And if you are on the wait list, then you get a Sarah call telling you that you are on the wait list for such and such. And then two days before an event, you also get a Sarah call reminding you about the event. If you do not have an answering machine, then you will not get the Sarah call if you're not home to answer the phone. 
And Brenda also mentioned sometimes with power blips, sometimes answering machines can be finicky, so just be mindful to check your machines and know that we will send out those calls to remind you. That's something I want to look at in the future with technology. Maybe people want to text rather than a phone call. So you can be thinking about that, and we'll work on that in the future. Reservations, who to call. So Ruth mentioned that, yes, she will now have the book. If you want to have a party, you need the great room, or you need the Carolina room, Ruth McCullers Lee will be your reservation book person. But Jessica was very smart to remind me that if you call catering because you're doing a special event, just because you schedule catering with Jessica does not mean that your room is reserved. So you do have to do a couple steps depending on what you need. So if you want food, you talk to Jessica and catering. If you need a room, you talk to Ruth. Question. Yes, yes, the, correct. The small dining room stays the same of how that was handled. Yes, this is for the common areas, other rooms, parlors, things like that. Does that make sense? Question. That stays the same with the front desk, yes. The question was guest rooms, if you didn't hear. That stays the same. All right. Reservation cancellations. Just a reminder, if you need to cancel, of course, you can do it on the portal. If you decide to call, if it's the day of, we ask that you call zero to tell the front desk the day of a trip. If it's anything else except the day of, and you're not doing it on the portal, then we ask you to call the hotline. Because we have, we've split up the duties and somebody will be checking that hotline Monday through Friday, a couple times a day. Hotline is 7700. That has not, will not change. Okay. I gotten everything so far? All right. There was, there was, uh, at one point, we were told if we wanted to cancel, especially tickets. Yes. Oh, yes. We didn't look at the list and yes. So were, the question. Well, the question was about if there's tickets and money involved, if it's non refundable. So if we'll always put that symbol in the pathway so you know if that's the case. If you sign up for a theater or a trip that requires money and it's non-refundable, if you need to cancel, then yes, you should try to find somebody on the wait list. Otherwise, you will be charged for your ticket. Does that make sense? Yes. The question was if you need to find a replacement and the wait list, or if there's no wait list or everybody's been asked, yes, you can use another resident. That would be fine. So do we need to let you know who we've chosen as a sub? That would be preferred, yes. So if you cancel and then you find your sub, yes, please let us know. You could do it on the hotline, but if it's like a last minute thing, then I would call zero and let them know. Obviously, we'll know at the bus, but it's nice to know ahead of time if possible. So far, so good? Okay, I'm a little nervous about this one. I saved the biggest one for last. So when the book goes out and we put the information on the portal, I know there's lots of feelings and comments about the reservation process and whether or not it's fair. So I did a lot of thinking, I think really well in the car, and I came up with this idea. I think the team agrees with me, so we're going to try it. Because we still need to use the hotline and the portal, we can't just do one or the other, and we'll never be able to just open it at the exact same time so that it's fair. 
here's our plan. Your paper booklet will be put in your mailboxes the third Monday night of the month. Don't worry about the date. We'll put this all in writing. So that would be this coming Monday. The paper book will go in your mailbox. But do not call yet to make reservations. We are asking that you follow this process and protocol to give everybody a fair chance. So that way, everybody has all day Tuesday to get their mail, look through the book. That gives us time to get all the information on the portal on Tuesday. Then you start signing up Wednesday, 9 a.m., it opens. Think about that for a moment. So even though we put all the information on the portal on Tuesday, and you will be able to see it because we can't turn it on and off or say it opens at 9, it will be there. But we are asking that you do not call the hotline or register until Wednesday. So I assume you won't be able to register until Wednesday? Unfortunately, that's not true. The question was, then you won't be able to. Technically, on Tuesday, you could sign up. So unfortunately, not to be mean, but to help in enforce our protocol, we will check it Wednesday morning. And if people have left messages on the hotline or the portal on Tuesday, we will save your names and put you at the end of the list at the end of the day Wednesday. Figure that's the most fair way to do this for everybody. Okay. So the question was, because we can't hit like on or off on the portal, like you can sign up starting Wednesday, once we put the information in the portal, it could take 30 minutes, it could take an hour. We don't have control of when it becomes available for you to see. That's what makes it challenging. So that's why we're going to put all the information out there on Tuesday. So you'll be able to see it. You technically could click on register. But we're asking you just to hold that button until Wednesday, starting at 9 a.m. So that way everybody has a full day to look through it, make their decisions, because the most, the feedback I've heard the most is that it's not fair because I don't have time to look at it or the portal people get it first. So this was the best balance I could think of for now to give everybody a fair chance. So if somebody does sign up on Tuesday instead of Wednesday, we will save your name and we'll put you back on the list at the end of the day Wednesday. So if it filled up Wednesday, then you'd be on the wait list if that makes sense. You can still use the hotline. So starting Wednesday morning, you can pick it up at 9 a.m. and give us all your reservations, and we'll probably have several people checking that first. Correct. We're asking for nobody to make any phone calls or portal registrations on Tuesday. Wait till Wednesday, 9 a.m. Get up, have your coffee, and then go for it. Alex. That's a very good question. We're going to find out, and then we can let them know whether or not we crash their system. If we call in just in case the system is crashed, uh, at, on Wednesday, early in the morning, we'll let's, make sure that um, all the portal, do we get knocked off because we've registered? Registered for two. The question was, if you try to do the portal, and then it crashes, and you call the hotline, will we knock your name off? If it's Wednesday, I will not knock your name off the list, no. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Wednesday. So I know you might not like the idea at first, but just let it sink in. Let's try it out. And we can change it as we need to. But I think this is a good shot to give people a chance to look at it and be fair so you don't have to come up in the middle of the night to get your booklet. You have all day Tuesday. And then you can plan your appointments for that Wednesday. You know it'll be the third week. So don't make a dentist appointment for 9 a.m. on that third Wednesday. <laughs> so you're ready. Question. Can you only sign up for one restaurant? No. You can sign up for more. We are going to try to monitor and keep track of 
what people are doing so we can make sure things are fair and we'll adjust as needed in the future. Questions? CJ. Yes. So I don't consider it more restrictive. It's just limiting one day to give you a chance to read. And then the portal will automatically put you on as long as there's, you know, enough spaces. The hotline, yes, we created a spreadsheet for us. And we will record the day, the time, and the person so we know exactly when they called. We also... Yep, I'm still getting there. We also have talked about if there's a 30 person limit, maybe we only put 15 on the portal and then we can look at the times of the hotline and the portal because the wait list tells me when you clicked on that button on the portal. So does that make sense? So if there's 30 spots, I put 15 on the portal, but then we still fill the 15 with the hotline or portal wait list people depending on the time to try to keep it fair. We're trying to keep it fair for everyone. Question. It's a, it's a voicemail, it's not a person. It's a voicemail and then we listen to it. So, yep, 7700 and think just concise name, apartment, the date and the event. Other questions about anything? Brenda. Mm-hmm. Right. When you call, if you call the hotline, you can list multiple events. You don't have to do separate phone calls for every event. So make yourself a list. You have all day Tuesday to make your list. <laughs> and when you call, you can just read through your list nice and quick. CJ. So do you give an acknowledgement if you choose to use the hotline that you're on the So the, the way they've been doing it is no news is good news. So we're going to Keep that for this month, and we'll tweak or address going forward. Once I get a better idea about the portal and cell phones and text messages, if there's an easier way to let people know. But we're going to keep it as no news is good news. If you're a portal user, you can always go back on and check to see if we added your name. You can check that portal anytime to see the list of names. Does that make sense? Well, we don't do text messages yet. That's what, something I'm going to investigate for the future. So will Pathways go out every month the same day? That's what we're going to aim for, yes. Barring everything goes accordingly with the printers, then yes, that third Monday night, because that works best for, for us and for Jacob's team that does the mail delivery, the third Monday night. So then you have all day Tuesday. Another question? Alex? Who's going to be where? Well, we'll be everywhere, but um, yes, I will be moving to this hallway here. Brenda and Anna will be working together down in Brenda's old office. Chris and Megan will be in my current slash old office in the wellness center. Becky and Julie will be down in supportive living. We have an office down there. And Ruth will be, there's an office in the marketing area. And Lori and Justin keep their lovely offices so you know where they are. That way we have lots of people on both sides and we'll be all over. Yes, Mr. Knight. Will your PowerPoint uh, presentation be, here be uploaded to the portal so we can download it ourselves? Absolutely. So we have that information? Yes, sir. The slide, the PowerPoint presentation will be on the portal. I think it says presentation handouts or slides. 
And it's also recorded, so it will be on the portal eventually as well. Any other fun questions? Yes, Ellen. Um, there's a new phone book coming out. Yes. Yes. Jessica and I will make sure that, yes, that is accurate for you. Just be patient with us over the next week if you call one of those numbers because it's an outside person that does the lines. So that will be done soon. Ruth. That's a good question. The question was, can we take our old phone books, your Springmore books, somewhere? There's recycling bins. Some people would prefer to have them shredded. We can leave that for discussion. All right. Yes. Chaplains, yes. Chaplains will still do their Monday movie matinee. Yes. First Monday. All right. So you also had a sheet with some colorful sticky notes and some categories. That is a chance for you to give us some feedback, some uh, specific ideas or places or topics. We came up with all these different categories, obviously health and fitness items, spiritual and emotional a specific trip or destination or restaurant, recreation, games, sports, art, intellectual, whether it's a specific topic or a certain speaker, community involvement, ways that you'd like to get involved or you would like for us to bring here. To be continued, I liked that idea from, I think it was Ruth, thinking positive, things you like that you want us to continue. And miscellaneous, in case I missed something and you have something else you'd like to suggest. So if you have any ideas today, please feel free to write them down and match it with this lovely color-coded sticky note up here. And all you get to do is plop your sticky note on the table and we will collect them all. If you don't think of it right now and you think, next week I have an idea, you don't have to give it to us on that sticky note. You can call one of our extensions, you can email, you can message on the portal. If you stop us in the hallway, I would encourage you to follow up with an email or voicemail because sometimes I forget by the time I get to where I'm going. So please, feedback is welcomed. We want to continue to grow and offer things that you all want to do. Any other final thoughts from the team? Thumbs up. Questions from you all? Oh, question. It will be soon if it's not. Plus, it'll be on the slides on the portal. But yes, Daniel will update the portal. It'll be in your new directory. Yes. Yep, you can always call zero. And if you call one of us and we don't know the answer or it's not the right staff member, we'll make sure we get you to the right staff member. But I'm so thankful. Oh, yes. I want to ask a question about the art collection. Question about art. If My goal is that when something is popular and there's a wait list that I would like to try to offer it again. I can't promise that it will happen all the time or for every specific item, but yes, that is the goal. I don't know that it can happen for the valent, are you referring to the glass? Yes. I'm not sure about that. I'll have to double check on that, but like the pizza party, perfect example. We had like a 60 person wait list so we're doing a February event, and we already have 60 people. So if you're not in January or February and you still want to go, then you'll have to put your name on the wait list, and maybe we'll have a third. So anything else? She didn't know I was going to do this. This lady has worked tirelessly to put this together.
Thank you, Brandon, for choosing her. <laughs> All right, we have some refreshments outside. Feel free to write on your sticky notes and bring them up. We'll hang out if you feel like chatting with us. And have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.